According to the testimony of Patsy Ramsey, on December 26, 1996, she discovered her daughter was missing after finding on the kitchen staircase a two-and-a-half-page ransom letter demanding $118,000 for her safe return almost the exact value of a bonus her husband had received earlier that year. Despite specific instructions in the ransom note that police and friends should not be contacted, she telephoned the police and called family and friends. The two officers who arrived at the Ramsey home conducted a cursory search of the house, but did not find any obvious signs of a break-in or forced entry. The note suggested that the ransom collection would be monitored and John Bonet would be returned as soon as the money was obtained. John Ramsey made arrangements for the availability of the ransom, which a friend, John Finney, picked up that morning from a local bank. In the afternoon of the same day, Boulder Police Detective Linda Arndt asked Fleet White, a friend of the Ramseys, to take John Ramsey and search the house for anything unusual. John Ramsey and two of his friends started their search in the basement. After first searching the bathroom and train room, the three of them went to a wine cellar room where Ramsey found his daughter's body covered in her special white blanket. She was also found with a nylon cord around her neck, her wrists tied above her head, and duct tape covering her mouth. The police were later claimed by observers to have made several critical mistakes in the investigation, such as not sealing off the crime scene and allowing friends and family in and out of the house once a kidnapping was reported. Critics of the investigation have since claimed that officers also did not sufficiently attempt to gather forensic evidence before or after John Bonet's body was found, possibly because they immediately suspected the Ramseys in the killing. Some officers holding these suspicions reported them to local media, who began reporting on January 1 that the assistant district attorney thought, it's not adding up. The fact that the body of the girl was found in her own home was considered highly suspicious by the investigating officers. The results of the autopsy revealed that Joan Bonet was killed by strangulation in a skull fracture. A garret made from a length of tweed cord and the broken handle of a paintbrush had been used to strangle her, her skull had suffered severe blunt trauma, there was no evidence of conventional rape, although sexual assault could not be ruled out. The official cause of death was asphyxiation due to strangulation associated with craniocerebral trauma. The bristle end of the paintbrush was found in a tub of Patsy Ramsey's art supplies, but the bottom third was never located despite extensive searching of the house by law enforcement in subsequent days. Experts noted that the construction of the garret required a special knowledge of knots. Autopsy also revealed that John Bonet had eaten pineapple only a few hours before the murder photographs of the home, taken the day John Bonet's body was found, show a bowl of pineapple on the kitchen table with a spoon in it, and police reported finding John Bonet's nine-year-old brother Burke Ramsey's fingerprints on it. However, both Patsy and John Ramsey claim not to remember putting this bowl on the table or feeding pineapple to John Bonet. The Ramseys had always maintained that Burke had slept through the entire episode until awakened several hours after the police arrived. In December 2003, forensic investigators extracted enough material from a mixed blood sample found on John Bonet's underwear to establish a DNA profile. The DNA belongs to an unknown male. The DNA was submitted to the FBI Combined DNA Index System, CADICE a database containing more than 1.6 million DNA profiles, mainly from convicted felons. The sample failed to find a match in the database. Later investigations also discovered that there were more than a hundred burglaries in the Ramsey's neighborhood in the months before John Bonet's murder, and that 38 registered sex offenders were living within a two-mile radius of the Ramsey's home, an area that encompasses half the